welcome to Bulgaria Now. And uh, today's show is from Vino Culture. I'm with Boris. This is our second take. We had a bit of a problem technically with the first one. Boris, I'm so sorry. How are you doing today? <laughs> uh, I'm still fine. He's still <laughs> fine. <laughs> a patient man indeed. And uh, if you're at home and the clocks have now changed and I know how it feels, it, you, you, you want to comfort and you're thinking about wine and good good red wines and also some nice rich white wines too so today's show is all about wine and especially all about low production wine project wine that's happening in bulgaria with indigenous grapes boris what have we got let's start with the whites let's do some whites two amazing chardonnays Uh, one's charisma from the wonderful dragomir estate and the other one is a Chardonnay again from Levent. Great wines, both of them. Uh, uh, we should say that uh, the Charisma needs a little time in the bottle. Yes. Okay, and uh, Levent uh, Contraire is already drinkable, already on the top, 215 vintage. But uh, more exciting for me is to have this one. This is also white, made from Waco grape, indigenous grape, Dimiat. Dimiat uh, came, uh, the origin is on the Black Sea coast, but it's planted everywhere in Bulgaria. Uh, so this makes a wonderful alternative if you're stuck on your Pinot Grigios and your Sauvignon Blanc. You need something real that's from Bulgaria that has some freshness. Uh, inexpensive, we're talking about a 10 lev bottle of wine. Five year, five yes, years. absolutely. It's uh, everyday wine, uh, you have a lot of pleasure. This one is something, um, yeah. Exciting for me, exciting because it's uh, made from old grapes, old, old vineyards, more than 50 years old, and you feel it in the nose. You, you get this distinctive touch of old vineyards, okay? When you put the nose in the glass, uh, you smell on it. Um, that's what I'm looking for. Nice and fresh and not t- too strong in alcohol, and that's a good thing in my book. Absolutely, that's the, the new wave of Bulgarian make pro- wine producing. Uh, to go down with the alcohol, with the tannins, to present the wines uh, to the bright publicum, to, to, uh, to drink more and more, not just one, two glasses and you get drunk. Mm. So, yeah, this is a good trend. Lighter wines. Talking of lighter wines, we've got a couple of very interesting projects like I've never tasted before. Launching today is a brand, not a brand, a project called Thirst. Okay. And these that's brand also, that's a project, that's Are project we calling two, it but it Thirst is... Yeah, Thirst is a brand, it's isn't a brand. it? Yeah. Brand. Okay, so a cool label, or labels, and uh, we've got one that's a 50-50 with Mavrud and Mouvard, uh, which is my favourite. I absolutely can't recommend this enough. It's uh, just over a thousand bottles of this, I think. This is the... Uh, we'll just taste this one. I think... Uh, Everyone's going to enjoy this. Just to remind you that if you're in Plovdiv, you need to come to Vino Culture, see <laughs> Boris. <laughs> uh, shameless plug, but it's it's just a wonderful place. This is a good wine bar by anybody's standard, and you'll get great advice. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, no, no, I mean this. <laughs> we do our best. Uh, however, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, I what love it. Love think? it. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. We we've got some oak there, but it's not that cloying oak going on there. We've got fruit. We've got tannins and uh, a smoothness, but it would go well with food as well. So, but not heavy. Different styles. Yeah. So, first to this project uh, from Alex Vilanov and Stefan Gionev. Alex is the winemaker. He's responsible for the quality and for the wine, the wine pr- process. Uh, Stefan is responsible for that, how it looks, for the branding, for everything, and. Uh, uh, that's the beginning now of their work and I'm very excited so so far so that's something new I tried for the first time in my life a blend of Murveder and Mavrut <laughs> uh, yeah it's a uh, it, it, it's explosion in the nose uh, I'm actually surprised in the freshness in the taste and in the aftertaste because um, you expect something different after you you smell it, it's, um, yeah, 
you should try the, the, the others. So the Mavrut goes in that way, but uh, it's it's a little harder, it's a little deeper. It's it, it, ha it has a little more body that has more freshness. It's um, yeah. Yeah. We're, we're not going to try that now because we're just doing a short show. We tried it last night. We tried all of these. So yeah. I really recommend these. There's no commercial interest whatsoever. Uh, they're just great wines. They're not wines you can find in many places. Probably only a Around about five or six places will be stocking. I'm not sure. Yeah, um, you know, these these two. This these two you can find just on four places because it's very strictly limited edition, just uh, between 260 and 300 bottles, which is yeah. nothing. And here's a little bit more, but um, also strictly limited. Yeah. Um, what do you think about this one? You you tried it already? Uh, let's just try it now, shall we? Uh, the Mavrud. I have tried it, but I will just give you my impression because this is from my memory from about half an hour ago when we screwed this up. <laughs> um, was uh, a, a different style of Mavrud. If you're used to someone selling you a Mavrud in a restaurant, it's often very heavy, very rich, very oaky, all too much as far as I'm concerned, often too alcoholic. Now, this Mavrud is light. It's wonderful. This is in Bulgarian oak rather than French oak, yes. And this is a new style of wine. Lighter drinking, it could be drunk without accompanying food. And it's got, this is, this is what Bulgaria is about, is it not now? Having indigenous grapes and uh, different mixes, blends. Absolutely, I'm very happy to, to have the, these wines here because uh, they represent really the new Type of winemaking. It's the new wave of winemaking, and um, you, you're you're right. That's uh, it's had, it has nothing to do with the common um, opinion about Mavrut. It's it has medium body, very crispy acidity, uh, incredible nose. Uh, uh, okay, uh, it, it's aged in a Bulgarian oak, actually. What did they say? Yeah, Bulgarian. Oh, okay. Yes, you did. Yes. Yes, uh, and that's 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 the path uh, using Bulgarian grapes, putting in Bulgarian oak to be different to to give uh, the wine this distinctive touch of uh, in the mi wine map. So that's Bulgarian wine. Yeah. Indigenous grapes using Bulgarian oak, not too much oak mm. to get ripen grapes. So that's and the future. Drinking something different. I think that's the future Absolute. for sure. Uh, so we've got. We'll so here in this my route, uh, it's yeah. just to one third uh, oak aged. So that's that's the way. Not to over oot, not too much oak, not this heavier style. It's. Uh, yeah. So customer friendly. <laughs> customer friendly, Mavrud. I agree. And uh, not too alcoholic. Um, we'll put these in the show notes, but just to really highlight, these are a new style of wines. This things are really changing here in Bulgaria. I think, in terms of wine, there's a, it's it, it's different. They're doing something different. I think that's what Bulgaria does well when it does something different rather than copying someone else. We're still walking the path, uh, but uh, yeah, it's the right way. Yeah, it's the right way. It's early days. Just to remind you, we've got Divino Taste Exhibition at the Endica, the Palace of Culture in Sofia, coming up. 18th of November, something like that. Yep, and there we'll be doing another show with Mitko, who's done many shows with me, uh, talking about wine. Uh, Decanter Magazine wine judge, and uh, we're, well, last year we went around just about every wine and picked out six of our favourites. We'll see what happens this year. But one thing I will say about some of these wines here, the production's so s small that they cannot be put in wine shows. They cannot. They can't qualify. They don't make enough bottles. If you're making just 290 bottles or whatever here, then these are wines that won't get massive publicity. They'll be snapped up and they'll be gone. And so you need to go to the right place, places like Vino Culture here in Plovdiv, to drink this sort of wine, real boutique wine. Anything else we should say? Nope. Just enjoy. Come and enjoy. Just enjoy. I'm happy so far. Good. It's this way, so yeah. it's, uh, and um, Boris is very modest and humble but he's a phenomenal host when you come in here you can sit down he'll give you a whole yeah. tasting he'll um, and his wife will do some wonderful tapas 
and the whole atmosphere is great. I'm not just saying this, but I think as a wine bar, this is as good as any wine bar I've been to anywhere in the world. So uh, <laughs> praise indeed. I'm embarrassing him. Modest guy, but trust me, you will absolutely love this place. And I'm not just saying that. I love it. I've been here several times now. Come to Plovdiv. Come to Vino Culture. Come and do a wine tour. Zina Sorensen is Danish, and she lives over here, and she does some amazing tours. Do check that out. Uh, her website is in the show notes. Finally, just want to thank today's sponsors, IDOS, A-I-D-O-S, IDOS.BG, accountants and lawyers in Sofia. You need good advice if you're going to do business here in Bulgaria. It's not always easy, and trust me, you do need the right people. So check them out. Also want to thank our partners at Bulgaria Independent Media Alliance, SofiaGlobe.com, foreignersandfriends.com and my own bansko.blog.com do check that out shameless plug again for bansko.blog.com because the ski season is coming it's getting cold it's getting dark and we're getting very excited so that's all from me and from Boris thanks for coming on the show thank you for the warm words and thank you <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for giving us a wonderful wine tasting and thank you so much for watching and listening bye for now